Good morning, friends, old and new. It's your good buddy and neighbour, the Fowl Quince, here with today's penultimate edition of the survey of the greatest hits of the 1960s, at least as I see them. No doubt at this point people will be looking more for what has been omitted than has been committed, but I've freely admitted from the beginning I'm a top 40 kind of guy, so it is biased a little bit towards hit singles rather than deep cuts or album obscurities. Nonetheless, there's an excellent playlist available. I recommend that you avail yourself of it and whatever you do, enjoy. And guten Morgen, meine Freunde, as once again we plunge into the mystery of the 60s. Number 100, Have You Seen Her Face by The Birds from 1967. Written by talented bassist Chris Hillman, this song opens the door for country music influence sounds on The Birds' later albums. 99, So Sad About Us, The Who. This lovely, tuneful slice of jangle pop proves it wasn't all bash and smash for our favourite union bejacked wreckers of Rickenbackers, punishers of premier drums and holiday in horror shows. 98, Rock and Roll Woman by Buffalo Springfield. Stephen Stills' love song as much to Los Angeles as any mythic hippie mama. This is both the perfect mesh of Stills and Neil Young's guitars and Stills and guest vocalist David Crosby's voices. Last Chance to Turn Around by Gene Pitney. Few people did drama the way Gene Pitney did. This was coming to the end of his run of US hits, although he had a couple of big ones left in Australia in the 70s. This is a Roy Orbison-esque pot boiler with a booming chorus. 96. Killing Floor by Howling Wolf. One of the greatest Chicago blues numbers, the Wolf leads his band plus guest guitarist Buddy Guy through a proto-metallic riff-based blues. Number 95. Back in My Arms Again by The Supremes. One of the high points of the golden year for Motown 1965. This is the toughest, sassiest record the Supes ever made. In fact, perhaps better suited to their sadly neglected cousins, Martha and the Vandellas. Bedside of a Neighbour by the Dixie Hummingbirds. The harmonies on this are great, but it's the rocking guitar solo that puts the topper on it. 93 Voodoo Child, Slight Return by Jimi Hendrix. This improvised in the studio piece may be one of the high watermarks of technique meeting technology on the electric guitar. 92, the upsetter, Lee Perry. In 1968, reggae was a new style just being born and Scratch Perry, with this record, was one of its midwives. 91, Born Under a Bad Sign by Albert King. If you Google Towering Riff, you get a web page about this Stax record masterpiece, recorded with Booker T and the MG's backing. The least remembered of the three blues kings, Albert was by any measure a titan of the blues guitar. 90. Who Knows Where the Time Goes, Fairport Convention. Sandy Denny's timeless meditation on those nothings in particular that fill the quiet house. This is just about the perfect folk rock record, in so much as it distills the whist of folk and uses the spine of rock to avoid becoming too treacly. Number 89, A Day in the Life by the Beatles, because there'd be a riot if I didn't include this somewhere on the list. Number 88, interesting contrast, I'm a Believer by the Monkees, and that's what made the 60s great. A day in the life to this masterpiece of economy and craft and in spite of being a Neil Diamond song, not taking itself oh so seriously. Number 87, Nowhere to Run, Martha and the Vandellas. Bossy, brassy, ballsy, bruising, possibly Motown's most underrated group, gets loud and out there making Diana Ross sound like a prissy 14 year old in the process. 86, Detroit City by Bobby Bear. A holler back to the honky tonks in which Bear reminds all those Southrons streaming north that all that glisters is not gold. The great irony of course is about four years after this song was released, warning of the pitfalls of life in the big city, riot has burned that city down. 85. Rudy, A Message to You by Dandy Livingston. The ultimate rude boy anthem, this song had its anti-violence message subverted as soon as it left Jamaica and the dire consequences predicted for Rudy became instead a listing of glories he could win. 
Still, a great fun song to sing along with at a gig and one of the first songs any learner learns to bash out on guitar. 84, India, John Coltrane. Into the mysteries we go with the one guy, no matter how trippy it all got, always seemed to have a plan for the music. The more I listen to Train, the more I'm impressed not only by his playing, but with his ability to conceptualise music. That's Life by Frank Sinatra. Cranky Frankie proves he is still the greatest barroom philosopher in the world. 82, All Along the Watchtower by Jimi Hendrix. Once, many years back, I was working in an office and one of the juniors there, nice young kid, asked me and my buddy Chris, was Jimi Hendrix as good as they say he was? That's a challenging question. Listen to this record and then ask yourself, was he as good as they say he was, or was he even better? 81. I can't explain by The Who. Okay, here's another challenging question. Is this the best debut single ever? 80. Let's Go Get Stoned by Brother Ray Charles. Ray comes out of rehab swinging, this time reminding his probation judge that it's just about drinking gin. A man who took out a trade paper ad to declare that he would never make anything but country records came awfully close to rock and roll on a few occasions. Witness this. 78. You ain't woman enough to take my man. Loretta Lynn. 1. Don't mess with Loretta Lynn. 2. This one is boosted about 100 places just for the brilliant guitar picking on display. 77. In the Midnight Hour by Wilson Pickett. Cut with Booker T and the MGs, with drummer Al the Clock Jackson in particularly distinguished form, this song was written by Pickett and Steve Cropper in the same Memphis motel room in front of which Martin Luther King was later murdered. 76. Yes I Can, Sammy Davis Jr. No amazing backstory here, no clever witticism, just one of the most freakishly gifted artists of all time belting out a great song. 75. Some of Your Lovin' by Dusty Springfield Fade as she was for her Burt Bacharach interpretations, Dusty had a simpatico with Carole King songs that few artists ever shared with a songwriter. 74. Understand Your Man by Johnny Cash After being guided in a dream to add mariachi horns to Ring of Fire, Johnny went one better and added them to his rewrite of Don't Think Twice It's Alright, and then sang it more like Johnny Cash than anyone had ever sung a Johnny Cash song before. 73. The Wait by The Band I defy anyone not to sing along with this. A rambling parable about the exploitation of simple human goodness. The reference to Nazareth is in fact Nazareth, Pennsylvania, where the famous Martin Guitar Company has its factory. 72. Honky Tonk Women by The Rolling Stones At this point, the swagger on the band appeared to be limitless. 71. Do Wackadoo by Roger Miller Um... I think this one is just here because I like it an awful lot and it makes me happy. I hope it makes you happy too and that you have a do wack 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 a do. Number 70, King Midas in Reverse by The Hollies. Sunny, clever pop from England's sunniest group. There are rock snobs who poo poo The Hollies' contribution like so many egregious boobs, but this is great and a hugely undervalued band. 69, The American Ruse, MC5. The late 60s to mid 70s Detroit scene was as influential on English punk and new wave bands as was the New York scene. And the MC5, most famous for their rabble rousing kick out the jams, were amongst those leading Detroit groups. The American Ruse, B side of their famous Shaking Street single, is a taut retelling of the Chuck Berry myth 10 years on. 68, Drunk and Feels Forever. John Lennon's Fuse State from February 1967 cast a pre-summer haze over the musical world, over his own psyche and over a rabid audience waiting with bated breath for the next thing the Beatles would do. 67. We must have been out of our minds, George Jones and Melba Montgomery. Honky Tonk was sounding its death rattle by the time this came out, but George and Melba managed to keep pressing on because they made records this well-crafted and this beautifully sung. I Can See For Miles by The Who. The greatest only ever made number nine record ever, perhaps. 65, Subterranean Homesick Blues by Bob Dylan. 
It's loud, it's fun, it swings like an elephant's appendage. It's got some words too, but I can't understand it. Number 64, The Israelites by Desmond Decker. It's loud, it's fun, it swings like an elephant's appendage. It's got some words too, but no one can understand them. Number 63, The Bottle Let Me Down by Merle Haggard. Much as I love his great guitarist Roy Nichols, Merle Haggard's records have always come off to me as a little slick, a little lacking in energy. But he knows how to get a vocal to cut to the heart of a song and how to move you to his beat-down world of grimy Oildale truck stops and Bakersfield honky-tonks. 62. Bedazzled by Peter Cook In my opinion, the funniest man God ever allowed to walk the earth, and here he turns his remorselessly satirical eye to swinging London 1967 and utters one of the greatest lines ever spoken in a song. You fill me with inertia. The sun ain't gonna shine anymore, the Walker Brothers. English specterism from the master of Grand Gougenol, Scott Walker. 60. You Really Got Me by The Kinks. Often cited as one of the most influential records ever made, let not the gravity of that description obscure the frantic energy and electric joyfulness of 134 seconds of the purest power pop ever made. Respect by Aretha Franklin. Alleged feminist anthem takes a song which basically says get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich and makes large and merry with it. Suck to you, baby. 58. Look on Yonder Wall by Elmore James. The song that first interested me really in listening to the blues. James is in near hysterical form here and the band is pounding and powerful. 57. Monk Time by the Monks. Okay, this is officially the weirdest group in the countdown. Comprised of four American GIs based in Germany, plus a local civilian drummer, Monks made an album of a strange, hypnotic, droning, antisocial, quite confrontational music in 1966, and then sort of disappeared until 2009. Any understanding of punk rock is incomplete without digging on the Monks. 56. What's Made Milwaukee Famous by Jerry Lee Lewis Popular myth has it that Jerry Lee Lewis was run out of town on a rail after his marriage to his 13-year-old cousin was discovered. He didn't leave town, he just went from the juke to the tonk and became a consistent country hitmaker. This is the best of him with its incredibly soulful vocal. 55. Twist and Shout by The Beatles Legend so tightly enshrouds this song it gets hard to take it back to its glorious rawness its sense of being the one last shot and the joyful, all-consuming energy of it. 54. In Dreams by Roy Orbison Back when I was young and foolish, a gang of my no-count friends would gather in the beer garden of the Royal Exchange Hotel in Tawong, sneak in some Chinese food and spend a Sunday afternoon talking bullshit and flirting with girls. And at some point, inevitably, someone would take 40 cents, put it in the jukebox, and they would play this record. At that point, all activity would cease, and everyone would sing along, drunkenly, out of tune, and overdramatically, until those last frantic notes, and then the meals would be returned to, the pointless patter would flow again, and the girls, suitably impressed, would be awooed. I was 20 years old, and these are the dreams that I nowadays live in. 53. Everyday People by Sly and the Family Stone A US number one and an Australian top ten, Everyday People isn't so much a funk or soul record as it is a driving pop song that uses funk and soul devices. Greg, Errico and Larry Graham's In the Pocket Drums and Bass are a stone solid groove, baby. 52. Highway 61 Revisited by Bob Dylan Bob's commentary on the ludicrous nature of ambition, authority and avarice, and perhaps the record industry in itself. It's rambunctious fun and the goofy cast of losers, chances and cheaters embeds it in the memory. Number 51. Little Sister by Elvis Presley. As I've said before, there are plenty of gems in Elvis's 60s output, and none better than this. He rocks as hard as he ever had with great greasy guitar crunching Memphis sleaze. Superb. Superb.